To open account at Google, first click Sign In. On the left-hand side of the Sign In page, look for the link that says Create One for Free and click it. On this page, you'll enter your information to create your account. That includes your email address, you'll select a password, state your location, your birth date, do a word verification, and agree to the terms of service. At the bottom of the page, click I accept, create my account. The next page you'll see is the Google browser window. Notice you're signed in. Your email address will appear on the right-hand side of the window if you've signed in successfully. The next thing you'll do is find the drop-down arrow to the right of the word More on the upper part of the screen. Click to open it, scroll down and select Documents, and click. Google Drawings is inside of Google Documents. To create a new drawing, find the drop-down menu on the left-hand side of the screen, click the down arrow, and choose Drawing. The next thing you'll do is give your drawing a title. Double-click the words Untitled Drawing. That will open the window that lets you give it a new name. We'll call this one Test. Click OK and your file is named. There are several choices of icons on the Google Docs window. You can use the words on the menu, for example, Insert, go down to Shape, and here you see the shapes we'll be using for this assignment. Or, you can mouse over the picture icons, select Shape, click to open. First shape we're going to be working with is the rectangle. It's the top left on the first line. Click to select it. Move your mouse over the window. Hold the cursor down, drag, and release to make a rectangle. Left click your mouse on the drawing to deselect your image. Now we're going to draw a circle. Go back to the shape icon. Click the drop-down arrow, go down to the second line, third from the left is oval. Again, mouse over the screen, click to drag your image. Click the screen to deselect. Now we're going to change the sizes and shapes of the images. Mouse over the rectangle and left-click it to indicate. Move to the bottom right-hand corner and notice that the cursor changes. That indicates that you can move that corner. Left-click to select it, hold and drag. Notice that you can move it up or down to change the size. The same thing happens with the oval. When you move the sides, it makes it a longer oval. If you choose the top, it makes it a taller oval. And dragging from the corners, makes it larger. When you have the image selected, you're able to use some of the tools on it. One of them is the flood fill. Select a different color from the drop-down menu, left click, and notice your selected image has changed color. Now try it with the rectangle. Click to select, choose a different color, left click. Once you've created an image that you like, you can use it over and over. While you have the image selected, choose Edit, scroll down, select Copy, click once to select. Left click the drawing screen so that the program knows where to put your image. Again, choose Edit, Select, Paste. Image appears. Let's try it with the oval. But this time, right-click the oval, 
and choose Copy. Left click the drawing screen to select it. Right click again. Select Paste. Now let's delete these images and start working on a key. While you have the images selected, you can click Delete to get rid of them. For the next step, we're going to create a text box. There are two ways to get to this. You can select Insert, scroll down, choose Text Box, or you can go directly to the menu, select Text Box, and left click to indicate. As with the other shapes, to form this one, you also left click on the screen and drag to create the size and shape of box you want. This can be edited later. Mouse over the text portion of the screen. Notice your cursor changes to the eye bar. This is where you're going to write your text. Since in the next step we're going to be creating a key, we're going to write the word key. Click Enter to place the text in your shape. Since we're using a text box and it's been selected, please notice that you get an extra set of menu items. You can change the text font, you can change the color, you can change the alignment, and you can change the size. Let's reposition the key. Notice when I mouse over it, the cursor changes to a hand indicating you can move it. Left click and drag. Go to one of the corners and make the key longer. Notice that the word key is in the middle of the box instead of at the top where we'd like it to be. This is fixed with the alignment tool found on the menu bar. Find a line, click the down arrow to open it. On the bottom row on the left hand side, find where it says top. Now we're going to make a circle that we can use for the icon in the key to indicate what type of plant we're using. Go to the shape menu, click to open, and choose the oval we used in the prior step. Now we're going to color the shape. This one's going to be lavender. We're going to copy the shape. You can right click on it, you can use the menu, or you can use the keyboard command Control C. Paste it onto the desktop. Change the color to represent a different plant. Copy it again. Change the color. And click the drawing to deselect. If you don't like the way the circles are lined up, click to select them. Control click to select the rest and notice that there's a box drawn around them and you get an extra menu. You're going to use this menu to align them. Because you don't like the way they're grouped, you're going to do Distribute and you're going to choose Vertically and notice that they're lined up better. Now we're going to make the labels for the key. Select the text box, mouse over the location where you want it to be, click and drag, and release. In the text box, we're going to start with daffodils. Click Enter. Repeat this step as many times as needed to create a label for each one of your items in the key. Now we're going to use the ideas to create a flower bed. Select the oval. Click and drag to shape it. Select a color, 
Then choose the items from your key. You can drag these onto your flower bed to show where the plants will go. Copy them as many times as necessary and drag them to your design. The final steps are publishing and sharing your design. On the right hand side of the screen find the drop down arrow to the right of the word share. Click to select. Choose the bottom selection publish to the web. Click start publishing. Click OK. If you'd like to copy the email link or the embed code, you have it here. If you're finished, click the X. Now go back to the drop down menu and click Sharing Settings. You have the option of deciding who gets to see your file. Click the link for change. If you want this to just be available to people who you give the link to, click anyone with the link. If you'd like to make it public so that anyone can find it just by searching, click public on the web. If you leave it private, only people explicitly given permission can access it. I suggest choosing anyone with the link and also allow anyone to edit if you'd like your friends to help you with your design. If you don't want them to be able to change your design, do not click Edit Access. Once you've finished, click Save and Close. In closing, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial about using Google Drawings and hope that it's useful for you to create a landscape design. Thanks for watching. Bye.